What is going on YouTube Averse John Stanek from Johnny Radio here bringing you another top five on maybe the last top five Friday. I don't know, uh, you know, what day I'm going to decide to do top fives going forward whenever I do do them. But, uh, you know, we've made it through all the years from 1965 all the way to current. So I'm finally doing my top five favorite albums of all time and some of you can probably guess what they are because you can usually see them when I do have the wall of perfect albums behind me but I thought it's such a beautiful day today and this is uh, such a special episode why not do it uh, out here on the back porch and uh, just hold up the records as we go so let's not waste any time let's get right to it at number five Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, 1973. I mean, does it get any more perfect than this? Obviously, for me, it does if it's uh, only my number five. But, uh, I mean, this is just one of the greatest records, one of the greatest concept albums. Uh, Roger Waters, David Gilmour, everybody just at the, the peak of their powers on this record. Uh, from time to money and, you know, the themes of the album just about uh, life and the life that we're living in and still this holds up as just you know all these themes of, of money time religion uh, war and you know how we treat one another like the, the great song us and them uh, closing with the amazing brain damage I mean just I could go on and on about this album I know I have I've done a, a review of all these albums you can check out on the channel at, at your leisure but uh, man it just doesn't get much better than Dark Side of the Moon and uh, yeah gotta have it in your top five so now at number four is four otherwise known as Zoso or Untitled uh, just simply Led Zeppelin um, I, I tend to think of it as Led Zeppelin 4 since, you know, their first albums were 1, 2, 3. Uh, but man, another great one from the 70s, man. Uh, just the 70s had the best rock music of all time, in my opinion. And, I mean, come on, all eight tracks on mm -hmm. here, totally solid, from Black Dog all the way through to When the Levee Breaks, which is just, ah. Uh, one of the most amazing, one of the most amazing sounding songs ever. The drum, the booming drums from John Bonham coming up that stairwell. And um, I mean, when you think about it, just one of the best self-produced albums. Jimmy Page produced all the records. And I mean, the sound that they created on songs like Stairway to Heaven, which, you know, some white would say is like one of the most overrated rock songs of all time, but it's still, I, I disagree with that. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, Misty Mountain Hop, I mean, Going to California, every single song has something to offer, and yeah, just freaking brilliant, man, and that's just my number four. So now at number three, we're moving into the 90s, and Octung Baby by U2 from 1991, I mean, come on, this is, and I know a lot of people would argue, like, the Joshua Tree is U2's best record, and that's a tough argument, but... I think Octung Baby somehow is even better than Joshua Tree. I mean, they, this, as Bono called it, the sound of them chopping down the Joshua Tree, them just kind of paving this mm -hmm. whole new path for themselves, just incredible. From the opening of Zoo Station, you're like, what is this? It sounds like industrial like noise, and somehow they make it work into what I feel is like one of the greatest pop records, even though it's more rock than pop. But I mean, Mysterious Ways, man, just one of the greatest like sing along tracks. That that's the song that got me into them, and then one is the song that made me a fan for life. One is actually my favorite song of all time. So. Of course, this is going to be in my top five, but there's not a weak track on here. Desert Island Disc, if there ever was one. I absolutely love this album. Probably the album that I've listened to the most in my whole life, if I'm being honest. And that's just my number three. So now at number two, you knew I was going to have to have the Beatles on here. Abbey Road from 1969. Talk about a perfect masterpiece. I mean, every single song. And then how they notch it up to do this whole medley on side B, where they do all these songs that flow in and out of one another, beautiful and magical. Uh, you know, when he says, 
oh, that magic feeling on You Never Give Me Your Money, I, I feel like that sums up the vibe of this album. I mean, Come Together, one of the greatest opening tracks. Then you got Something by George Harrison, one of his greatest contributions to this band. And George is my favorite Beatle, by the way. Uh, like, just for the spirituality that he brings to the band and uh, just some of their greatest ballads like this. And Here Comes the Sun, two of his greatest outings on one album. Even Ringo's Octopus's Garden is a great track and one that's really fun to listen to. Uh, Paul, of course, with Oh Darling, shredding those vocal chords. And then John coming right around and doing I Want You, She's So Heavy, shredding his vocals. And then they never sounded heavier on that track. Like there's everything that you can love about the Beatles on this one album. And uh, yeah, one that never gets old, just absolutely amazing. And like, this is the one that got me really into them as far as listening to their whole discography and kind of working backwards. And if you're new to the Beatles, I kind of suggest going that, that way, but absolutely amazing and now my number one which is never anyone else's number one but i don't care because blues is my favorite genre of music if i had a gun to my head and i had to pick one and i was always on the lookout for like the greatest blues album because so many blues records are like you know by the time you get to that like midway through the record it feels very samey and it's like okay you hear one you hear them all but this record man from start to finish is fantastic it's the Paul Butterfield Blues Band self-titled debut album from 1965 and just every single track on here from Born to Chicago all the way through is just and, and it's such and it, there's a song on here also called Blues with a Feeling and I feel that's a perfect way to sum up this album because um, a lot of blues is on the slower end and they do have some mid-tempo things but most of the stuff is up-tempo stuff on here I mean just Shake Your Money Maker, which of course the Black Crows named an album after that song. Uh, just incredible. And uh, Thank You, Mr. Poobah. Like, even the instrumentals on here are, are great. Um, uh, of course, I Got My Mojo Working is a really fun track. And, uh, you know, some of these are, of course, written by some older of the blues guard but it feels like especially how you know half of the peop people that were playing on this record were white half were black uh you know one of the first truly like integrated rock albums of the 60s it just feels really special in that way and what they conjure up together is beautiful and Mike Bloomfield, man, one of the most underrated lead guitarists of all time, just with blistering solo after solo on this record. It is incredible, and that is why it's my number one. If you haven't heard it, I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you liked all the other records that I've talked about leading up to this one. Uh, and if you love the blues, you're going to love it. But that is my top five, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, special video. We're going to have so much more coming on the channel, more top fives, uh, you know, more album reviews, top 50s that are going to be interactive. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for the live videos where I give you the mission on what to vote for. There's going to be a lot more uh, of interactivity on the channel, uh, which I'm really excited about. So thank you guys, as always, for watching. And as always... Viva La Vinyl. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and be sure to ring the bell for notifications so you can always see great quality content like you're seeing on the screen right now. Thank you so much for supporting Johnny Radio, and I'll see you soon.